impregnated by the dead. Why don't you join them? This one doesn't know you, but at least you aren't a walking corpse. Bright moons! This one thought these were lost forever. You saved many lives at great risk to your own, Walker. You have Nalado's respect. That was one of your Roxia, the Usurper Queen's pet necromancer. His undead devastated our troops, so this one took pleasure in ending his existence. Now, Yeraxia's chief necromancer, Zumag Fum, has been with her for some time, but our intelligence suggests his followers have only recently rallied to her side. I've spotted dragons circling in the distance from time to time, but it doesn't look like the winged monster that attacked the camp will return today. I must join them there. The Khajiiti forces have been decimated by this attack. It will take every strategy I can devise to help Garesh Ri prevent the collapse of his militia. The... Yes, I read the reports. Zumog Foom and his necromancers working for my despicable half-sister. Such magic leaves behind a miasma of stench and decay. It le Good idea. Dragons are bad enough, but undead tend to go on without end. Better to deal with them now, before Euraxia's power becomes more than we can contain. In such a direct manner? Yes, as far as we know. It could have been coincidence, but the attack felt designed to hit us when it would do the most damage. I wanted to send Chimera with you to find the source, but I have no idea where she's gone. Find the source of this army of undead. And if you see Chimera, send her back to Riverhold. She's as reckless as she is capable, which is a dangerous combination. In case you haven't noticed, we two don't always see eye to eye.
beginning. I did not expect to see you in this desolate place, Walker. Did Captain Nalado send you? Or have you come to join us as we hunt the dragon that killed so many of our warriors? Then our missions coincide. We can work together to destroy the undead and slay the dragon. It will be glorious. When I do not take orders from that old battle mage. Besides, the blood of Kajiti warriors cries for vengeance. To the worthy life is full of risk, Walker. I assumed you knew that, given what you do. I will tell you a secret, though. Before my parents died, they gave me a pendant. As long as I wear it, Jode watches over me and provides his protection. To Jode, yes, but also to my family and heritage. With me! Stay close! We will hunt these necromancers down and end this dragon! The path splits here. We will go right. Walker, you take this.
cold touch of lingering death! Enemy awaits five claw. Destroy the necromancer. No more excuses. No more delays. Flesh your... from your bones. These bones cannot be broken. <laughs> Come on, let's go. 
one's little morsel. Mulamnir would talk to you. Look upon Mulamnir in despair, morsel. You have no chance against me. No. Mulamnir wants you to understand the challenge before you. Our puppet, Eurexia, commands a legion of soldiers, an army of necromancers, and a horde of undead. You and Abnathon are insignificant, but even an infinitesimal flea can irritate after it crawls beneath the scales. I offer you one last chance to survive. If you and the Battle Mage leave elsewhere, my brothers and I will not hunt you down. Then you will die, but not before we slaughter your friends and set fire to elsewhere. Once we reduce this land to so much ash, only then will I tear you apart. Leave elsewhere, little morsel. Tell the Battle Mage, if I see you again... Five Claw, are you all right? I heard what the dragon said. Perhaps my confidence was a bit misplaced. That creature was much bigger than it appeared when it flew over the camp. I never jump without first knowing where my feet will land. Also, I have very sharp claws. We lost so many today. The dra we defeated the necromancer and shut down one of their undead foundries. We need you and Tarn, despite my dislike of the man. But what the dragon intimated about Euraxia, it called her its puppet. Yes, you must do that. I will join you after... After I take care of the remains of my soldiers. Be still now.
Oh, there you are. Spare a moment for a chit-chat? Hmm? If we've had this conversation already, then I wanted to thank you for the useful advice. But if I haven't seen you since our talk at that mysterious gravestone, which seems much more likely, then I could really use your help. Did I mention the dreams? Visions, really? They come and go without warning, like seeing through someone else's eyes. Quite disconcerting in an interesting sort of way. Anyway, my trusty shovel and I, we searched that entire grave, and it was gone. The Petraeus head, the dreams, the uh, visions, they drew me there, but someone got to it before I did. I have the strangest sensation in the pit of my tummy. It could be the cobweb porridge I had for breakfast, or something bad is about to happen. Well, that's sort of like leaping from the cliffs of failure without a rope, or at least without tying the end off first. I can't tell you how many times I've made that mistake. Oh, and... At this point, we need to come up with a plan that takes into account Euraxians, Necromancers, and Dragons. I proposed a few options, but Goreshri wasn't sold on any of them. You paint a troubling picture, my friend. Still, we need to celebrate every victory we achieve. My half-sister likes to think that she's in charge. She won't take kindly to being called a puppet. As for leaving elsewhere, I think not. Obviously, this Mulam Nir fears us. Otherwise, the dragon wouldn't have deigned to talk to you. Every conversation I have with Cadwell makes my head throb, but one mystery at a time, if you please. A parley? I may not like her, but we are family. Besides, it would give the Khajiit time to regroup. You're beginning to think like a Tharn, my friend. Here, take this. Garish Ri gave it to me, but I refuse to accept payment for my services. A parley with Euraxia is a capital idea. I'll send word to Rimen to expect us. I imagine my half-sister will treat us as befits my station and agree to the meeting. Attend to any other matters if you must, then see me when you're ready to leave. It just so happens I already have one. It involves distracting my half-sister with wit, charm, and words she barely comprehends. Oh, and you. Euraxia never could resist a pretty face. You'll pretend to be my bodyguard and personal valet. Consider it obfuscation to hide your true purpose. We don't want to give Euraxia a reason to react poorly to overtures of reconciliation. Not that I expect to reach an accord, but still. Go on, go on. I'm capable of traveling to Rimen on my own. We'll meet up at the city gates and go to the palace from there. I'm relatively certain Euraxia will honor the parley, but be prepared for anything. She's still a Tharn, after all. We're not very close, in case I haven't made that abundantly clear. About six years ago or so, while Emperor Varen was busy with his rebellion, Euraxia took advantage of the confusion to lead a column of Nibbanese mercenaries into northern elsewhere. She declared herself Queen of Rimen and its adjacent fiefs. Of course not. The Khajiit call her the Usurper Queen, remember? Once Varen became Emperor, he had other problems to worry about. Same with Queen Irene. As long as... This one hates the idea of talking to the Usurper Queen. We should be stabbing her in the neck. Still, Nalado sees the necessity, even if she... By marching into elsewhere with a mercenary army and slaughtering our rightful Khajiiti rulers, not only did the usurper slay our king and queen, she murdered the rest of the royal family. Her cra A parley with the usurper queen. I doubt she'll agree to any sort of diplomatic solution. But it will buy us time to replenish our resources. Very she merged into an equina with a mercenary...
the uh, 